Okay, Jeff here. Welcome to another micro video. Let's spend a few minutes in our time together thinking about surge pricing. Hi there. Well, this is also known as dynamic pricing or demand responsive pricing. And basically what happens is that uh, prices of a good or service go up often temporarily during periods of particularly high demand. One of the aims is to balance supply and demand to encourage maybe more suppliers to enter the market. We'll talk about Uber in a second. And also by incentivizing consumers to change their behavior and perhaps shift their, their demand, their spending to less busy off peak times. But fundamentally, surge pricing is about increasing revenue and increasing supernormal profits. Now, it's not always the same. It depends on what happens to cost. But it's about yield management, revenue maximization and an increase in profits. So ride sharing companies like Lyft and Uber use surge pricing uh, in theory in theory, to help encourage more drivers to offer themselves for work and uh, reduce wait times at peak times. Hotel companies, as we'll see, airlines, theme parks, they often use peak surge pricing during holidays, special events. And some utility companies now use surge pricing to manage demand at peak times uh, during hot summer days, for example, when air conditioning use is high, when the pressures on the system are high. So here's Uber's surge pricing model. Now, I'm not an Uber user, but many of my friends are. So uh, this is how it works. According to Uber, there are times when many people are requesting trips, a cinema, a theatre performance or a sports stadium has just uh, reached the end of the event. There aren't enough cars on the road, uh, bad weather, for example, or some other external event. Um, so prices go up. Uh, and the aim, Uber's aim, justification, is that that then encourages drivers to enter the market to, to make themselves available um, so riders either pay more or wait when rates are raised due to surge pricing the uber app lets riders know some riders will choose to pay others will choose to wait to see if rates go back down uh, and crucially of course that with uber now that it's upfront so the surge amount is shown on your offer card depending on the city and i think the, the reality here is that uber as, as a company is a platform business is no different to many other platform businesses now. They're using sophisticated algorithms, sophisticated data-rich data analysis to determine prices. Here's a good example. Hotel chain, I think this is Premier Inn. So I'm trying to book a hotel chain, uh, hotel room in Newcastle at the weekend. Uh, and you can see the prices are pretty high relative to the average price of Premier Inn. Uh, uh, over £100 for everyone. Clearly at peak times during the weekend, on, on a Saturday night in particular, prices go up. On a Sunday night, prices go down. Uh, typically the, the best night, if you want a cheap hotel room, is a Sunday night. The weekend travellers, event seekers have gone. They've gone home and the business users have yet to set off on a Monday morning. So Sunday night is nearly always the best time to book uh, a hotel room in any part of the world really, but in particular in the UK. Airlines, of course, harness surge pricing. They use algorithms when pricing. Uh, this is uh, trying to book a flight here from Manchester to Amsterdam. Uh, interesting. A nice bit, a bit of um, scarcity bias here. Last booked 11 minutes ago. Four seats left at this price. Two seats left. That's harnessing scarcity bias here to try and encourage people to, uh, to buy the, uh, the ticket before the price uh, goes up. But you can see here the prices vary. Of course, this is the same flight from Manchester to Amsterdam in return. It's the same flight, but vastly different prices. Twofold, threefold difference in price. There's a very famous study in 2017 uh, by some Italian economics and um, uh, professors who studied nearly 40,000 flights offered by EasyJet. And they found that tiers of ticket pricing rose steadily as seats were sold. So they have limited buckets of seats. And as each bucket sells out, higher price buckets are offered. The key really is to log on to the EasyJet um, membership scheme or something and get advance warning of when, when seats are about to be released. And EasyJet is happy for you to do that because that means they can guarantee selling, selling seats when they become first available. Now, interestingly, in the news just yesterday, the American iconic American fast food company Wendy's said that they're investing $20 billion in digital menu boards which allow prices to be easily changed. So in other words, without instead of employees manually changing prices, you may well get 
digital menu boards. You can imagine the same at Macadies. You can imagine the same in a pub or club where prices are being set by an algorithm based on the strength of demand. So and this would be interesting to see what the consumer reaction is to this because when normally when you go to a fast food place, you need you need a degree of certainty about what you're going to pay. It'd be quite interesting to see if this if this um, airline hotel style surge pricing works in the fast food industry. Let me just take you through a bit of analysis here. So this is classic peak off peak pricing. At off peak times, demand is low. So typically, if you want to profit maximize, you would charge a price there with an output of Q1. I've drawn the marginal cost curve here as non-linear, suggesting that costs tend to go up as you get towards peak times. Businesses run up against capacity constraints and marginal costs often go up as demand increases. So there will be your off-peak price uh, and market demand is low. Firms have lots of spare capacity. Of course, they're happy to set a low price because they want to use up some of that spare capacity. Whereas at peak times, demand is more inelastic. Uh, the average and marginal revenue curve is much f higher up in that uh, XY space. And a profit maximising firm can charge a much higher price for essentially the same good or service. So by charging surge prices when demand is high, as shown there, they can definitely increase the revenues and potentially offset the lower earnings at the off-peak times. Now, I haven't shown average cost here, so you can't show total profits. But the marginal cost is higher but the price is way above marginal cost. And this is surge pricing. You can charge your price well above cost. The effectiveness of surge pricing depends obviously on the behaviour of consumers and in particular the, the coefficient of price elasticity of demand. So in other words, when you have a low price elasticity, consumers willing and able to pay a high price for that Uber taxi or for that uh, hotel room at the weekend or that flight they want to take on Saturday, so when you have a low price elasticity of demand, you're going to get surge pricing because uh, revenues will go up. Some critics argue, of course, that surge pricing can exploit consumers or lead to price gouging during emergencies. Firms deliberately raising price to take advantage of difficult situations, uh, tapping into um, people's willingness to pay, extracting consumer surplus. A lot of criticism, for example, back in the day about Uber's pricing during the aftermath of, uh, of terrorist events, for example, in the UK and overseas. Higher prices during peak times can make services unaffordable for some consumers and families, particularly those who are on relatively low incomes. So it might reduce their effective demand, potentially worsening social economic inequalities. And there's a whole, the whole idea of trust, I think, comes into this, that with some products, you know, if I'm going into Starbucks, if I'm going to McDonald's, if I'm going into a restaurant, you know, I want, I want a degree of certainty about what I'm going to pay. When I go to a supermarket, I want to know, roughly speaking, what I'm going to pay. If every product is subject to surge pricing or dynamic pricing, it could well be the case there's going to be quite a bit of kickback from consumers because people want a degree of expectation. They want a bit of trust and certainty about what, what the price is going to be. And uh, they don't want the headaches of having to literally look at every price label and see if it's going up or down and waiting sort of playing the game of chicken to see if it's going to, going to change. And perhaps with supermarkets and fast food could be an example of that. It'll be interesting to see if Wendy's investment in dynamic pricing pays off. Hey, well, thank you for joining in. Hopefully you found this video interesting and useful on surge pricing. Stay positive, stay curious, and we'll see you sometime soon.